Here we go. Hot water with Carrie. Okay, so part two of the Power Hour Master Series. Uh, this one, you know, part one was the successful sales funnel. Part two is leveraging your MLS tools with a focus on RPR. Because if we talked about all of our MLS tools, we would be here for hours. And then at the end, if you have questions about any other tool, almost any other. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that a birdie told me that I might be getting access to real soon. But if I do, or when I do, I'm going to teach you that because I'm an expert in real list. But it went away and maybe it's coming back. So I'm, I might come back and talk about that one day. And then as soon as I become really proficient with those Florida tools, I got you, my Floridians. So we're going to focus on uh, RPR today. And again, if you do have questions, just ask me and we will talk about those tools later. All right. So today's the day you will take uh, time to figure out what your MLS and your association offers. Now, in my marketplace, our MLS is a separate entity. So it's not owned by my local association. And we have multiple associations that feed into our MLS. So depending on where you are, what state you're in, what MLS you're in, you need to figure that out. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. And these are things I need you to figure out. When I started selling real estate in... 2001, I just worked in the MLS, whatever they told me to use, I used, I didn't show up to training and I was probably working hard. Now I'm a quick study. So if you show it to me, give me a, you know, a little bit and I can figure it out. Even in my online platform, the agent journey, give me a minute, maybe an hour, two hours or some videos and I can figure it out. I used to edit television for a living. I'm on the radio and I'm very tech savvy. So I want you to figure out what tools can you leverage to build your real estate business? So what tax system does your MLS or association offer? What system can you leverage for, leverage for data? So when I say leverage for data, we all know we can leverage our MLS for data. You need to figure out how to master your MLS. If you've never taken all of the classes with your MLS, go figure it out. I often have people say, Carrie, you know, how do you become an instructor? Now, I've been teaching pre-real estate. I used to teach how to use Microsoft. I, you know, I'm pretty good with Microsoft products. So if you become an instructor, you kind of learn how to use the tools better. So if you go back to your MLS and they're like, well, we don't really have classes or a lot of classes, go start teaching it to your office. Go start teaching it for your association. Figure out how you can leverage that data and learn how to use it. So what tools? So for me, it's my MLS. All of you today, it's going to be RPR. We've got Remind, maybe Realist one day, right? I have Market View or Market Stats, which is InfoSparks. I have, let's see, what other tools do I use? I have the MLS Data Co-op powered by CoreLogic. So I have all of these tools and we, most of us get Realtor.com professional. So I can shop the entire United States. So which tools do you have to get data? I can even use cloud CMA and give my, give my client, the end user, the ability to change their market analysis. So what tools can you use? So that's your homework. Well, you have more homework. And then do you have a lead capture form? Does your MLS give you a lead capture form? Some of you don't even know. Now, if you have cloud CMA, you get it. Does your MLS offer a lead capture tool? Ours does. And I, and I even asked about what we call the smile tool, if that's going to be updated, maybe. But we have at least three ways to capture, actually four. We have four ways. And so another, so I just said my MLS. So you need to find out if your MLS offers it, Cloud CMA. Um, I said, what else did I say? Uh, 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 I got to think about that. So uh, my MLS dashboard. And then we also have a tool called uh, New Home Resource. And I think even Florida has that one. So you have ways to generate leads. So you need to figure that out. So your homework is to uh, do some discovery. So you got to do some discovery work. In today's class, uh, we're going to discover how to generate leads with RPR. And I promised, depending on the time, I will answer your questions about other tools. I don't have realist, at least not yet. So here's some list ideas. From realist, you could use the same list um, from uh, in, uh, in not realist, in RPR. If you have realist, you could use this. You could use this from Remind. What tax data system do you have? I've already looked up 
pre-foreclosures in Maywood, Plainfield, Kissimmee, Florida, and Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm going to show you that we are starting to see more pre-foreclosures. So some of you need to start integrating that into your marketing campaign. So one list idea could be you, you're, you have a new listing, you want to mail. And I've said this before. These are just three ideas. So a coming soon, just listed, just sold. I would say maybe a coming soon, just listed, under contract, just sold, welcome the neighbors to the neighborhood. So if you're a buyer's agent, just sold, welcome to the neighborhood. So this is a list idea that you could get from RPR. How about a mailing list, the bottom of the market? So in my MLS, I've already looked at the bottom of the market pre-class. And the bottom of the market for me was around 2010 to 2013. Now we could start looking at when we started to spiral down, whichever, whichever way you're looking at me. So at the bottom of the market, like 2009-ish, 10, 11, 12, and 13, and some of 14, but a true bottom for us in Northern Illinois was 2010 through 2013. So we could go pull a list of everyone, a couple of things, expired that didn't sell. Hmm. Now you may or may not get those from RPR, but you could still get them. My goal is to show you the bottom of the market when people bought at the bottom of the market, because we know we're above bottom of the market prices. So that's, that's another list. How about move up buyers? If you know the turnover rate in your community, you could go, you know, and look up people that could move up, right? How about just move down? What we're finding is baby boomers, and some Gen Xers are moving down and they're competing with the millennials because when millennials aren't buying their big houses, so move up or down. So that's a list you could get. And then a mailing list for pre-foreclosures. Now there's always a way to think about a list. Like you might just need, when I said coming soon, just listed, just sold, that same list could be for your own neighborhood. So we could make all of these more than one type of a list, but I'm gonna show you all of these today. Now, after you find your list, and depending on your pocketbooks, because some of you may have um, been on Clubhouse with me today, once you find your list, now, depending on your budget, your first month, I want you to mail every single week. Now, you're, you're a little behind. So if you started mailing in August or September, you're ahead of the game. But if you've never really mailed or you're just starting a new area, I need you to mail every single month, every, every, for the first month, every week depending on your budget. If you don't have the budget, just mail monthly. The second month, I need you to go by monthly. So first month, one, two, three, four, then the next month, one, two, and then by the third month, you go monthly. Because if you started mailing now, um, and some of you are like, well, Carrie, it's the holidays. People are thinking about it and you could still get lost. So you could say, I'll wait till January. Either one works, but the sooner you start mailing, even if you say, okay, I'm going to mail this month and it's going to be, um, maybe it's time to, you know, invest in a new home for the holidays. Maybe it's time to upgrade or downsize for the holidays and then go into your four week campaign in January where they're not getting as many holiday cards. So that's your strategy. Now, you should always have a call to action. These are things you've heard us say before. It's not like you haven't heard Marky or me or a J-Man or any of the trainers out there tell you this. You need to always have a call to action. Now, I'm giving all shout outs to Kimberly today because Kim on, um, why can't I think of Kim's last name? Today on Clubhouse, she said she does a, a recap of the year and she did a video. And I was like, oh, that's like brilliant. And then I got a text from another agent saying, Carrie, another agent does this and she'll show her, share her marketing with me. So she did a, she did a recap to her sphere of influence. She, you could do a recap to your market, um, to your neighborhood, and you could do a redirect to a video with a QR code. I thought that was like brilliant. So shout out to the agents that are already doing this, but I thought that I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I am so doing this in during the holidays and then add your social media to the post now, or to when I say post or to your direct mail piece, let me say this. If you're going to add your social media, consider this, you know how you do a redirect to your video. You could use a QR code. No matter what, we need to redirect some, some, send you to something that's of value, because if I just send you to let's say I send you to my Facebook page, 
you might get the Carrie and Mark show and be like, oh, what in the world? So you need to really think about what you send them to. So if you have a, an account, and I'll show you this when we get towards the end, if you have an account on Instagram and you have a video section, you could specifically send them to your video section. And if you figured out how to send them to a series, you could send them to a series. So think about what you send them to and always have a call to action. And again, you don't have to spend any money for those lead capture forms, simply use Google. And eventually you can upgrade. Because remember I said, I didn't have deep pockets. I walked my subdivision every single month. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so RPR it is. All right. Now I am already logged into RPR, but just for the sake of doing this, if you've never logged into RPR ever, it is literally NARRPR.com. And if you've never created an account, and I'm moving some things around out of my way, you can go down here and click create an account and you simply need your NRDS number. If you don't know how to find your NRDS number, literally Google it. So make sure you Google it. So here we go. So we're sharing. I think I'm sharing my second screen. I think you guys can see it. Give me a thumbs up. Is it sharing? Give me a thumbs up. Yes, no. Let's see. Yes, yes. Okay. I don't know why it didn't really look weird. Okay. So when you go to, so in my MLS, for those of you that are my Illinois friends, you can get to RPR from here. But if you're simply going to RPR, just go to NARRPR.com or just Google RPR. My guess is that most of your associations probably have it somewhere on their website. So again, if you're going to create an account, go create an account. And if you're looking for your NRDS number, you can search NRDS lookup, look at that. And you can simply look up your nerds number. If you don't know your nerds number, it is on the back of your magazines. You can find it pretty much everywhere. And I'm not here to tell you about the NAR tools, but some of you don't know what you don't know. You get discounts everywhere, hotels, rental cars, you name it, there's a discount. Okay, so now once you've, create, once you've created your account, I'm not teaching you the full program, but let me just give you some tips. At least take a moment and in the top right-hand corner, update your profile. At least update your profile, add your photo, because if you do send reports, at least you're doing good. So now that you're in RPR, and you can see I've already kind of been here, and I told you here, I'm going to go back to my, my PowerPoint in another screen, so I, oh, I lost it, so I can tell you, here we go. So we said we're going to look at coming soon's just listed and just sold. All right, so I'm going to start there. So if you're taking notes, first thing I want you to do, you got a new listing, and you, your seller says, okay, I want you to send a list. Um, you, you're going to, it's a part of your marketing strategy. So you put in the property address. Now I do know some of you do not get, have the ability to download this. And so it's going to, you're going to get a little more creative. So the first thing I'm going to do, and you might be able to invest in the cold directory, but I'm trying to keep you from having to spend money. So I'm going to pull a list based on this address. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go back home. I actually, I want to do this on the map. So we're going to go to the map and I'm going to remove my boundary and I'm going to zoom in to Broadview. Oh, I was just there. And then I, we're going to zoom in to Broadview. Am I in commercial or residential? We want residential. So Broadview. So depending on which state you're in, you're just going to zoom in. So once you zoom in, I'm just going to remove my boundary because I, um, I know what I want. So I want this area. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit because it's yelling at me. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to do a map rubber band. Come on, give me a, give me a break. So we're, I'm going to go over here to the right and we're going to click draw. Once you click draw, you can choose freehand radius polygon or the box. 
<clears throat> and it really depends on how good you are. So I'm gonna go with a box and this is what I want. So this is about what I want. I want 17th, maybe around 25th. And so I'm gonna search this area. And I have 369 properties. Now, if you're like, Carrie, that's way too many for me, you can narrow it down. You don't have to use this many. But once you do get your list, number one, we put in the area we wanted. You could zoom in by address. Number two, you use over to the right, your draw. Number three, you simply click mailing labels. And so from this one, we can do the coming soon, just listed, just sold. You could do, if you're the listing agent, coming soon, just listed, under contract, just sold. And if you're the buyer's agent, now talk to your broker owners, talk to your associations. I know in our state, once the deal is closed, I can send just sold and welcome your neighbor. So if I'm the buyer's agent, just sold, welcome your neighbor. So I click mailing labels and I have a few options. I can choose comma separated value and I can export and I get 2000 a month, 2000 a month, or I can choose the mailing labels PDF. So you could do either one of these. Now I'm not gonna print these out cause I don't need them. And I don't wanna use my 2000 cause I only get one RPR account. So if I was in a different training ID, then I'd go for it. All right, so now I'm gonna remove the boundary. So now remember, that's your coming soon, just listed, under contract, just sold. If you're the buyer's agent, that is your just sold and welcome my friend to the neighborhood. All right, so now you have a mailing list for the bottom of the market. Now this time, I am going to click on the filters. So notice we have this sub, sub menu bar and I click filters. So I wanna make sure that I'm only looking at the public record. Now, typically a default would be for sale for lease, but I've already changed my defaults because I knew I was searching today. So I know that let's say I wanna look for people at the bottom of the market. Now it really depends on your MLS. So remember I told you, you need to figure out which tools you have in your MLS. So how can you figure out when the bottom of the market was? So you need to look at some reports. Now I am, I'm gonna look at a report and I'm gonna put in Broadview just to give you an idea of what this could look like. And I'm gonna go back to like 2008. So the bottom of the market in Broadview, and I'm just gonna spin this out to like 2010 through 2013. So now once you know your bottom, you're gonna come back to RPR, put in that neighborhood, and then choose just public records. So don't forget filters. So your neighborhood, public records, only public records and filters, and then we'll choose the bottom of the market. So I'm gonna put in 0101-2010 through 1231-2013. And then we'll update our search. Now, these are properties that are, let me go back to my filters, give me a second. What I want to do is I want to scroll down and I want to make sure, let's see, where's my, my data? I'm only looking for public records right now. These are off the market. So these are public records that sold within 2010 to 2013. Now, why is this important? Because if it's sold in 2014, we're not going to get it. If it's sold last month, we're not going to get it. So I have 27 single family homes. Could I put in condo? Sure. Now there aren't that many condos in Broadview. Could I put in co-op, mobile? I know there are no mobile homes in this city. So you could simply put in a date range. Now we could change this and put in a different neighborhood. So if I wanted to put in Naperville and feel free if you're watching via Zoom live, feel free put in a neighborhood that you want. And then here, I'm gonna change my filters. We're putting in 2010 to 2013, and we're gonna get rid of that. And look at that, we got rid of the condos. Wow. Well, first of all, let me just go look at Naperville. Let me change the bottom of the market for Naperville. So the, wow, wow. Oh, if I, I just had a whole, I'm, my brain is like thinking like, if, you, if you're working in Naperville, like I should just do the math on what the price change was, right? That's like a squirrel moment. So I'm gonna go with, I don't even know if I wanna go this far out. I'm gonna go with 2009 to 2010. So we're gonna change this data. 
Let's see. I need specific zip codes. If you are working in the city of Chicago, if you are thinking of if you have another state, I need a specific city and state if you're outside of Illinois, because if it's outside of Illinois, I know where Allen, Texas is, Kissimmee, Florida, Ames, Iowa. Right. You guys get it. So if you're looking at another state, I need to be I need you to be specific. So I'm going to put in 2009 through December 31st, 2010. Let me go back to the report. So there are, let me just go back to the map. I just didn't like any of this. Like there's like a huge amount. So these results are 1,636 properties. So if you scroll down, let's see what else we could do. So I wanna work in Naperville. I might put in that I'm looking for properties with four bedrooms. So this will help me out with that 1,600. And so now I'm at 225. This is a workable list. So I'm in Naperville. And if we go back to the filters, we put in 2009 to 2010 and we put in bedrooms. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Like this, I need you to think. A lot of times as real estate agents, we, you know, they used to say we used to just throw darts and like hope somebody, hope it would hit the target. You are doing predictive marketing through RPR, not even Remind, because I know in Remind I get, um, more data set, more data options for predictive analytics. But I'm teaching you how to think if you don't have a tool like Remind. So I'm telling you, go back to your MLS and look at the bottom of the market. I mean, how cool is this? So let's see, what are we telling? What are people telling me? Duluth, Georgia. All right, let's see. There's a Duluth, Minnesota. See, so yeah, I'm not, there we go. Why don't we go clear this out a little bit? Let me get rid of these four bedrooms. I don't know where Duluth, Georgia is, but wow. And I don't know what the bottom of your market is. I don't have that data, but let's just assume that it's, because Georgia may not have been like Illinois, but let's just assume it was like this through like 2012. You have 1,500 properties that could have been during your bottom of your market. And if you're trying to find four bedrooms with at least two bathrooms, update search, oh. Oh, look at that. 435. So my Duluth friend, April. Hey, that's a great name. I was born in April. Um, 45 minutes outside of Atlanta. Latissa, you're bragging. My friend from Illinois. Deer Park, New York. Let's try that. Here's my point is I'm not an agent in any of these areas. I'm not an agent. But if let's just say I was an investor. Let's say I was an investor. I'm not getting anything. Let me type the whole thing in. Really, that can't be right. Maybe I spelled it wrong. I thought it said 176. Here, let me get rid of these bedrooms and bathrooms. There we go, 468. I was not patient. So this is between 2010 and 2012. Let's see, High Park, it is 60615. But here's the, this is even better because I have access to Hyde Park. I think I do, Hyde Park. Hyde Park, is there a number? Yeah, Hyde Park. So the bottom of the market in Hyde Park was pretty long, but let's just let's just go with 2011 through 2016. So 2011 through 2016. 142, 142. This is just single family. If we threw in condo, maybe I'll get 1600. Like there is absolutely no reason why you can't generate a lead. We just got to be consistent with the mailings. Let me see if I can pull another state. So am I saying that this is what sold at the bottom of the market, uh, Patty? Yes. This is, this is not only what sold at the bottom of the market, it hasn't been sold again. So this is when, this is the last time this property sold. So if, and I don't have access, I don't know uh, what the data is in say, Trinity, Florida. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm working on it, Sue. 
But if I put in Trinity, Florida, and I there's a lot, so let me go change the filters. Um, I'm gonna say Trinity, Florida was through like 2012. Let's see. So 2010 through 2012, 429. And if we put in bedrooms, and you know, I'm making it up because this is just, I'm this is not my state. Whoops, at least not yet. Whoops. Come on got to be more than this. Well, you would know the market better than me. So here I'm coming one day. So 429. So 429 in tr Trinity, Florida from 2010 to 2012. So this is what was at the bottom of the market and hasn't been resold. Now, the other thing you can do, and since I do have some of my friends from other states, uh, Edmond, Oklahoma, it doesn't is that this is like huge it doesn't like this there's a lot at least this is what i'm thinking let's try this so if i put in four bedrooms or more in edmond oklahoma 2209 does it tell us if the owner is absentee or not now let me try let me go look let me see if we get that filter let me let me give you the filter now, this is why it's good for you to know the other options. Let's see, here we go, yes. So miscellaneous fields. So here we're gonna do this for Edmond, Oklahoma. And we got four bedrooms or more. As a matter of fact, I'll turn it off, it's gonna yell at me. And let's put in absentee owner, update the filters. So in Edmond, Oklahoma, we have 953 properties that are not owner occupied. Great question, Dominique. Great question. All right, let's do one more out of the state. Harrington. Am I spelling it right? Harrington Park. Harrington Park, New Jersey. And I only put it, like, I don't know the bottom of the market. Oh, let me get rid of these. Do I have bedrooms? Oh, absentee owners. We still have absentee. Let's turn that off. So this is all 90, 90 between these dates. So again, your homework in all of the areas you want. Now, if I mean, it really depends on where, where you are. If you're in Illinois, I got you. Lewis, Bill, Kentucky. I know it's Louisville, but you know, there's a lot. So here we are in Louisville. No properties. Oh, it doesn't like my date maybe? I don't know. Come on, this can't be. What are we doing? That's gotta be an error. It's gotta be an error. My friend Ellen from Kentucky, don't let me forget this, but that can't be right. That's gotta be an error. Unless, unless there's a state thing with RPR. So let me know, Ellen, let me know. But I'm pretty sure you've got data for Louisville, Kentucky. All right. So now that we figured that out, the other one I want you to know is that, so we talked about coming soon. So you, it's the mailing list, bottom of the market. You could also use this date range for, you know, that every five years people move in the cities you work in. So you could do it for that. And then the other one, my favorite is foreclosure. So I'm gonna get rid of the date range. And this time feel free and I'm gonna go through and let's see, South Michigan, 48076. And this time I'm gonna, under the filters, scroll down to pre-foreclosure. Pre-foreclosure. So if I update, you have none. Let's try another area. Let's try 60172, which is in Illinois. There's five. There are five pre-foreclosures in Roselle right now. Let's see, 60441. And I'm gonna show you the ones I pulled, 60441. There are nine. There are nine pre-foreclosures. If you put in, so this is what I want you to see. And I know we all work in different markets, but I was just pulling random areas before class just to see what I would get. 
So in May, where there are 15, I also pull, let me go look at my, my notes. I also pulled Plainfield. In Plainfield, there were 27. There are more now than there were three months ago. I also pulled Atlanta, Georgia. And there are 39. Hmm. I also pulled Kissimmee, Florida. And there are 186. I'm just waiting for the market to change in Florida. Here I come. And that's to buy a house. So I, I'm predicting a shift. If I wonder if I could pull all of Florida. Let's see if it yells at me. Let's see. Nope, doesn't like that. I can't do. I don't. Let's just look up Tampa Bay, Florida. Nope, nothing there. I need specifics. See, Miami. Four hundred twelve. Four hundred twelve. Four hundred twelve. No one else wants to me to pull anything. Let's see. Trinity, Florida, we pulled, but let's just see if, what the. Come on. One. So you're in a stable area. So you're doing okay. But Kissimmee and Miami, man. Uh, Lake Forest, let's do, I'm going to do Lake Forest and, and Fort Lauderdale. I'm going to have to come back up. So Lake Forest, Illinois, let's see. There's six, so not that many, but still six. Um, is Nova Raton in Florida? Oh, I should look up Boca Raton. That's not far from Miami. Sarasota, oops. Sarasota. <clears throat> Sarasota, and then right outside, look at that. So in this view, we're getting 79. Like you could, San Antonio, let's try that. Oh, I saw something else. Wait a minute, let me come back up. Oh, I'll pull Aurora. Yeah, I'll do that one. Fort Lauderdale. This is where I need help spelling. Fort Lauderdale, 66. <laughs> like, here, let's try San Antonio. There's really absolutely no reason why you can't start. Now, let me say this. I would start marketing. So San Antonio, I'm assuming Texas is what they're giving me. Whoops. Two, not many. So that's that's a good thing, not many. What kind of mailer would you send to a pre-foreclosure? So in this market, I'd probably send a, a marketing piece that says, first of all, let, let me go with this. And I'm gonna pull a neighborhood that I know or think I know. So this is Aurora, Illinois, and there are 40. If I were gonna mail to these 40, what I would do is I would pull data from my MLS. And to, just, to, just to make it real, just so people don't panic, because you, what you have to remember is in, in wherever you're mailing to, if someone, why won't this give me all of Aurora? Wherever you're mailing to, you got to know that the attorneys have access to this and they're getting mailers everywhere. Um, so you could send a report like this that shows that um, pricing, here, I'll do this. Pricing is still up. 12.9% from the previous year. And if you add 12.9 to 6.3, so what, 18, so over 19% higher than 2019. And depending on your MLS, now all of you, here's another tip, go to your local associations because all of your local associations have tools like this. You probably don't know because you don't read the emails like me, 
I only know because I'm forced to read them. Um, but our, your, a lot of your associations pay for these same reports that you get. They just get them built out for you. So I know that in Illinois, Chicago Association, Main Street, I know that Fox Valley is getting these reports, NASBAR. I know a lot of these associations are paying for a, a, a report that gives data based on city. So this, this is what I would send to a pre-foreclosure. And they'd probably get a handwritten envelope letter. And it would say, dear homeowner, did you know that um, inventory is down 34.4%? In addition to inventory being down, median sales prices are still up. If you're thinking about selling, I would love to have a conversation, no obligation. I'm not even talking about the fact that they're in pre-foreclosure. Then the second mailer they give from me might talk about the pre-foreclosure. Don't just walk away, you have options. And I'm, again, I'm not here to get you to take the short sale foreclosure class. Um, I know I'm gonna talk about this in the Agent Journey membership, but let me just give you some tips. All of you need to Google Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac short sale rules and read them. So, and of course, I want you to join the membership and I get it. You know, sometimes you're like, you know, Carrie, it's not my budget yet. You know, I'm, I'm not that true hard salesperson. I'm waiting for my husband to walk in and say, what are you doing? If you learn how to learn, you can figure some of this out. But sometimes you just need some of us to coach you through it. But if you did though, if you, the first two mailers, the first one is a soft sell because of COVID. The second one might be a little bit harder. Yeah. Second one might be a little bit more direct. Let's see, don't you, uh, to see if they're listed. Now, let me say this, um, excuse me, give me, give me a second, give me a second. Had to sneeze, you didn't want to see that. So in our so in our PR, there are some companies that opt out. So you may not know if they're listed or not. But remember, I pulled, so I did pull public records. So let me give all of you a tip. Now I'm gonna talk about how to build a website in Canva next week. And some of you are taking Marquis Masterclass on Canva, but watch this. If you're gonna do a mailer, well, first of all, if you do a mailer and you do a letter, just put at the bottom of the mailer. If your home is currently listed, please do not consider this solicitation. Just go with that. I'm not telling you not to do more research, talk to your managing brokers, but I'm all for being honest and ethical. So if you do have access to tools like uh, Remind, you could use Remind because you can filter out anything that is listed. So I hope that kind of uh, helps a little bit. So the first letter was, Dear homeowner, did you know, and this is where I pull a report like this, did you know that inventory is down 34.4% compared to last year and median sales prices are up? If you're thinking about selling, I, you know, let's have a conversation and you could actually send them to a link to, you know, find out what your home is worth. You could do all of that. And then the second one might be a little more direct. Don't just walk away. You have options call me and let's chat. Make sure you have a good short sale attorney. If you're not, a, if you're not good at it, you just need a good short sale attorney. And here, I'll just show you. If you literally Google Fannie Mae short sale requirements. There we go. Enter. There you go. I mean, they give you, they give you the stuff. They give you everything you need. I'll just post this link and it's very long, but they tell you, they give you all the tools. They, they tell you about the servicer, um, evaluating a borrower, like who qualifies. And, and you could literally read this to a client as long as you don't tell them what to do without knowing what the rules are. Yes, D says, please get, and you're only posting to the host and the panelist, D, but D says, please get the SFR designation. Maybe I'll teach it. And I am qualified to teach it. So yeah, check that out. All right, so back to RPR. So let me just give you a few more tips and then let's do Q&A. So, so here's a cool thing is you once you do this and you click um, mailing labels, again, you could download this as a, 
I have too many records or something. I don't know what it's telling me. Mailing labels, why is it yelling at me? Cannot export our records. Warmer properties in your search cannot be due to local regulations. That can't be, I'm in Aurora, Illinois. Maybe because I was in other states, but I know I can mail to Aurora, Illinois. So you'll do your mailing labels. Here, I'll go back to, here, let's just refresh. We'll just make sure they know where I'm at. That's not true. I know I can mail here. All right, let me just, we'll clear the screen and we will change the filter from Aurora back to Maywood. Then we will scroll down to, we'll put in our date range, 01, 2010, whoops. 2010 through 1231. 2013 and put in everything. 500, I don't want that many, but we'll do three to three. So once you have your list, simply click update. And then once you're back in the map view or the list view, so list, grid, or map view, mailing labels, and you can mail CSV or PDF. And again, I'm not downloading on purpose, but there you go. You get the idea. Now, if you do run out of 2,000, go back to your tax system and get your list. Then that's 2,000 a month. That's 2,000 every single month. So again, my goal for all of you is to use this for coming soon. You can simply zoom into any area. So you, and oh, by the way, let me say this. You could heart these areas. So if this is a neighborhood you want to select, so if this was my... Um, let's say bottom, let's do this, Maywood, Illinois, let's start with the city name, bottom of the market, save. So you could save this so you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. So if anything does sell, they, it should be removed from the list. So if you always come back, so now you come back to RPR and then you look for your reports in their download, I mean, in your drop down over here. Oh, it wants me to read them. Come on. Come on, RPR. Can I use RPR to find expired? So let's check, because I never use RPR for this, even though I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why I can't get my list. But let's look. But I should have a list here in my favorites. Let's see, my work. There it is, my work, my saved properties. There we go. So there it is. My save search is right here. So for some reason, the drop down wasn't working. So just simply go to your work, click my saved, and there's my list. So let's go back to home and search. And then let's put in any area. So I'll go with Aurora. I didn't, let's see, I'm going to remove the boundaries and let's click on our filters and let's see what we get. So we get for sale, for lease, not canceled or expired. If you're in Illinois, I am teaching this tomorrow in Rima at 1.30. Yeah, so you're not getting it here. So either Remind or Realist or your tax system. That's why you need to learn your systems. Where's the initial search button? Just click research. They didn't call it search. They call it research. So you can click property search right here. Let me see. I have you and the screen side by side. Would the screen you're working on be larger if that's what the only screen was? I'm not, that's a good question. I don't think I have two screens up. Are you, so I'm just gonna put my one screen up. Yeah, if you just have one, if you're doing this side by side and you're trying to do it with me, it would definitely be smaller. You can now pull a background check. You're gonna pay for a different, different tool. You're gonna to pay for a different tool. I this is what I'll do for all of you. I promise you, I will teach this on a Saturday. I will teach Remind on a Saturday. I was gonna do it this Saturday. Let me feel better. Let me feel better. And yeah, let me feel better. Let me feel better. 
I promise. Just keep watching and I'll send an e-blast. Okay, so you know you can save your work. You know this is how you search under search, property search. And when you're bored, check out neighborhood search. And here's the tip I didn't give you. And if you did decide you wanted to share on social media, when you click create a report, there are reports that you can build. So you got to remember, if whichever one you choose, make sure it doesn't have MLS data, like houses and things like that, because that could be a violation of the rules. Look at that. They have the AARP livability index. How interesting. So um, it, I think the neighborhood report might work or the market activity report. Let me view it. I'll tell you. Let's see. Yeah, this is a good one. So this is something you could post on social media market activity because it doesn't give you anything that talks about listings. So check that out. You don't have to give all of this, but once you do, let me, let me publish it so you can see what it looks like. Oh, I don't know if I want that. Let's see. Let me see if the neighborhood reports the one I want. Yeah, I think I want the neighborhood report. So we're going to go with the neighborhood report because that one's safe. <laughs> Run report. All right. So it's running in the background. And once it's finished, once it's finished, I'll get a pop up that says it's finished and then I can share it on social media. So they only last, I think, for like 30 days. So once it's published, I'll, um, I'll show you what you get and you can publish on social media. All right. So let's do this. Do I have any questions? Even if you have, you know, quick questions about another tool, we have about 10 minutes. Go for it. Let's do this. What other questions might you have? Do I have any? Let's look at the Q&A. Oh, someone said Bartlett. So let me pull RPR Bartlett while that's building. Bartlett. Let's see what's going on in Bartlett. And so when you say Bartlett, just need this to reset. So I'm going to come back to, because I know Bartlett's in Illinois. Let's see what the bottom of the mar market is in Bartlett. Bottom is, whoops. Wow. I'm looking at the Q&A, 5,000 pre-foreclosures in Miami. Wow. When would you start mailing to the people for pre-foreclosures now? And that's why I would send the happy mailers in December because some people that celebrate the holidays don't need you just bombarding them with, don't lose your home during the holidays. Like I would go with happy stuff. Let's get your house for, on the market in January. Okay, Bartlett bottom, let's go with May through, let's do 2013 through 20, 2012 through 2013. Where is this? RPR. There's my download. But it should be also. Okay, so once it's downloaded, let's see. Where's my report? They turned something off. Oh, report options. Post on Facebook. There it is. And then if I click post on Facebook, looky there. I could post on Facebook, but please review what you post on social media. Please review that first. All right. So I promised Brian, here we go. Bartlett, Bartlett, Illinois, bottom of the market. Click the, click this. We're putting in 01 slash 01 20. What do we say? 12 through 12, 31, 2013. Now you could expand this a little more, but look at that, 491. And here, and I really like what Dominique asked for, the absentee owner, because now there's only seven. So if there's only seven, that means you can hand write envelopes to, and send it to where they get their mail, not to the physical property or both. You could do both, or you could do both. So Rita, good question. Rita, tell me what city you work in. Do, are you in Illinois, Rita, Kelly? Are you in Illinois? Okay, give me a city in um, Illinois, uh, Rita. So how did you get the lower number for Miami? In Miami, when I put in, here, I'm gonna clear this. Okay, Rita, I got you. So in Miami, 
Florida. We got 5,000 properties, right? I scroll down and I click pre-foreclosure. When I click update, I'm getting 92 pre-foreclosures, pre-foreclosures. That's what I'm getting. So here's, so he, for those of you that are not in my MLS, I need you to go to your MLS and figure out which data tools show you when you had the bottom of the market. And I know all of you have a tool. It might not be InfoSparks. If you have showing time, you might have market, market stats, okay? So Rita said Oak Park. So because I have a tool like hers, well, should we have the same tool? I'm gonna look at Oak Park and the bottom of the market in Oak Park, we're gonna say was 2011 through like March of 2013. So she could literally come back here and put in Oak Park, Illinois, search. And I'm gonna click the filters. There's four pre-foreclosures, Rita. I'm gonna turn off those pre-foreclosures <clears throat> and we're gonna put in, oh, I forgot already. 2011 through like March of 2013. So I'm gonna put in January of 2011 through March of 2013. So you have 13 at the bottom of the market. Let's see, let me update and see if that changes. Yep, there you go, 13. And Oak Park, I mean, it's Oak Park. Like, but we could, we could expand that a little bit just to see. I could put in like when the market started to shift, like there were 18 and 2014. You could, here's another thing you could do is you could go back to 2008 because there are some people that did not sell in 2008. We could go back, I don't even know how far, how far back does this go? Let's go to 2001. Cause there are some people that did not sell. So you got 52. So remember here, this is what I was saying before. So hold on a second, I'm losing my screen here. So, what you're doing is you're going back to your MLS and you need to figure out when, when the market, when prices were really low in your market, in your marketplace. So for, uh, for Rita, she picked Oak Park and I have a tool that looks in Oak Park. So I'm able to see that the bottom of the market in Oak Park was around 20, 2011 through 2013. So if once I start really looking at Florida tools, I'll be able to figure that out. So I need you to go back to your MLS and I need you to figure out in your MLS when the bottom of the market is in the neighborhoods or the cities you work in. Hope that makes sense. Let's see. I'm trying to run a neighborhood market report. Can add, can add map boundaries versus entering a neighborhood name. I'm not quite sure what you mean, but I think I'm gonna guess. All right, let me just run over here. I got it. How did you get that lower number from Miami? I think I answered that. Got it. Never mind. Also, are, are, also, are you suggesting we mail them monthly or biweekly? I'm Tara. I'm recommending that you mail based on um, your pocketbook. If you can afford every week, if you're just starting to mail for pre foreclosures or anything new, go for it. And then the second month, bi-weekly and then by the third month jump to every month but it really depends on your market market your pocketbook so it's really up to you it's really up to you um where can you watch the replays i am streaming this live on real estate live in marky and and my uh, facebook live group and then i will also upload it to youtube i'm going to also upload it to youtube oh i might i'll i'll put it in um i'll put both of them for those of you that have already joined the agent journey facebook group I'll, I'll, I'll put it into a guide in the agent journey, but let me feel better. Depends on how I'm feeling after this. All right. So I had that question in. I, so Valerie, are you talking about in RPR? Let's see in RPR. So which neighborhood are you pulling? A neighborhood market report. Oh, okay. I got it. You're talking about neighborhood market reports. So let's say you're in Crystal Lake. I don't know. So Crystal Lake, Illinois, and I want to build a creator report in Crystal Lake. So 
neighborhood market reports can add map boundaries versus these are they are what they are. Um, so could so right now I got all the neighborhood report is based on all of Crystal Lake. If you pull, I don't know if they give you boundaries, but let's just try it. So I, I think I get what you're asking. So we'll go back to the property search and let's see. I'll go to the map. I need to zoom in. Let's go back to Crystal Lake. And then I will remove the boundaries and then zoom in. Oh, that's the wrong end. So let's say I just wanted, I want the results. I just want to map something out. So I'm going to draw freehand it is, or maybe not. This is the area I want. There we go. And then it says create a market activity report. So there we go. Yes, you can. You could do it based on boundaries. Great question. Best way to get this mailed out, whatever is easiest for you. For me, I've been using um, my admin in the office. Thank God she didn't join the call. I don't think she joined the call. Um, because there's some things I want handwritten because I need them to get into your house. So it really depends on what your goal is. There's, you could also, I mean, there's so many options. And my next question would be, Natalie, you know, tell me what company do you work for? You can just say it in the, in the host to panelist. Uh, someone said calligrapher, that's a good one, uh, uses your handwriting. You know, I'm, I like, I've been using Remind to test it. I've also used Prospect Plus. So really, if you have a company that that does this for you, go with that. But calligrapher, that's my next test, D. That's my next next test. You have to tell you have to tell us how that's working for you. Would you recommend we focus pull all of Chicago or focus on one neighborhood? Well, uh, you know, here's what, let me. I'm gonna dump, jump out of this for a second, and then remember, at six thirty, you can jump off. If you're, if, well, let me, let me just do this. The hard thing about using a tool like RPR, and I'm just going to pull all of Chicago. Let's, let's see if we can get all of Chicago pre-foreclosures. I can't guarantee it, but let's test. We'll clear this because I don't, the hard thing about all of Chicago is sometimes you do need to be a little niched or niched, but for pre-foreclosures, you might be okay. Whoa. Let's go back to the filters. There's 616. So do the next thing, my next question would be is, do you want to mail to 616 pre-foreclosures? And then could you mail to just three bedrooms? And there's 315. Could you mail to three bedrooms with at least two bathrooms? And there's 109. So that, that to me is a workable list. I will, thank you. I might have, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at the chat. You guys are not seeing the chat. <laughs> it's happening tonight, Velma. It is happening tonight. I'm sure all of you want to know, Velma is having me take a hot toddy tonight. I'm, I'm sure of it. I'm sure, I'm sure. So, this is, this is what I, I'm going to expose you to this and watch for an e-blast and I will do, I'll do Remind again for all of you. I really wish I could change it from WebEx, but it's my MLS. But let me just say this. If you, the cool thing about Remind is it doesn't limit me on a neighborhood. So you can look at Remind nationally. Now, again, if you don't have Remind, just, oh, I don't want to do that. Just know that you do have, I don't want to do that. You have the, like, I could come here and watch. First of all, I'm not even going to change anything. I'm just going to go, I'm going to change the status to off market. I'm just going to click off market. Sorry about that. And I'm going to scroll down to distress deals, list pendants. And in my map view, there are 744. And I'm in Northern Illinois. I could just kind of move over here to my, to the, you know, my neighboring state. I'm not getting a lot here in, I'm getting more when I get closer to the other river. I mean, the other lake. So you could really test this out. Oh, you know what? My filter might not be a good filter. 
uh, notice of default, notice of trustee sale might help. Yeah, that might help. So. So, all right, everyone, I, you know, I'm done talking. Let me, let me make, let me check my questions one more time. Uh, well, you know, it was taking a little time to update. So here's, here's my recommendation for all of you. Get in here today, play with RPR, watch for an email, and I will teach Remind Prospecting. And then once I maybe get access to Realist, I'll teach you that one. I will teach you that one. And if you have questions on Facebook, once I end, I'm going to hop over to Facebook and just answer them in the chat.